Since early August of 2025, the ISS Crew-11 has been carrying out various scientific experiments, maintaining the space station, and occasionally filming Starlink constellations passing by their space station. And by the way, for those of you who routinely watch ISS footage looking for UFOs, this can sometimes be one of the misinterpreted UFO sightings that are allegedly seen from the ISS. Another one, by the way, was a series of CubeSats that were deployed from the Japanese Kibo module for the International Space Station. CubeSats are regularly deployed from the ISS for a variety of different clients, and if you see footage where a camera is actually tracking something moving across the sky from the ISS, chances are it's a satellite that was deployed by the ISS. All that being said, though, something has happened with this crew that has never happened before. And that's the fact that they are coming home early because of a medical emergency. So what exactly is going on? And most importantly, why does an entire crew have to come back early, especially a JAXA astronaut from a space program that doesn't get to send their astronauts up that often? Why does everybody have to come back early because of one man? And more importantly, what does this mean for future Mars missions and medical emergencies that might transpire on those types of flights that cannot be evacuated? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. So one thing I'm really going to miss about this particular crew's coverage, or their mission that is, on the ISS, is the incredible footage captured by astronaut Kamiya Wee of the JAXA space program. This guy has captured some astonishing footage of our Earth passing beneath the International Space Station. Pretty sure he is going to miss his time on the ISS, especially since it's ending a month early. Then again, for all we know, this could be a medical emergency with him. And also, it was not fair for me to say one man. There's also possibly one woman that could be experiencing a medical emergency as well. We don't know who has the problem. We don't know what the problem is. This is the first time in NASA's history that the space agency is cutting a mission short due to a medical issue. The agency is targeting a return date of no earlier than January 14th, although it's probably going to be taking place on the 15th, the way the schedule is lining up right now. The agency previously postponed an ISS spacewalk scheduled for January 8th, citing a medical concern with a crew member that appeared the day before. NASA's Chief Health and Medical Officer James J.D. Polk said that the affected astronaut is absolutely stable and that this isn't a case of emergency evacuation. The ISS has a robust suite of medical hardware on board, but not enough for a complete workup to determine a diagnosis. Without a proper diagnosis, NASA doesn't know if the astronaut's health could be negatively affected by the environment aboard the ISS, and this is why the agency is erring on the side of caution. Now, in case you're wondering, the two astronauts who were scheduled to conduct the spacewalk were Zena Cardman and Mike Fink. However, that's not necessarily proof that one of the two of them experienced the medical condition. They have to be supported by astronauts on on the ISS in order for the spacewalk to be conducted safely and it's also important to note that Kamiya we requested a private medical consultation he was overheard on an open comms channel requesting that that was just a few days ago that he requested a private medical conference with a flight surgeon but those requests are a routine thing on the ISS so it's difficult to make a direct connection there probably not a great idea to do that. 
quote, the matter involved a single crew member who is stable, according to NASA. Safely conducting our missions is our highest priority, and we are actively evaluating all options, including the possibility of an earlier end to Crew 11's mission, which, of course, is what happened. Again, it's ending only a month early. It's not as cataclysmic as it might have been, but still, question remains, why do they need to evacuate the entire crew? Some of you may be wondering about that, especially if this isn't a problem with Kamiya's health, given just how infrequently JAXA astronauts get to travel to the ISS. This is a huge loss of opportunity for JAXA. So why does this have to happen? Well, the problem is the evacuation ship, if you will, is currently docked to the ISS and they only have one of them. It's not like a ship comes up to pick up the astronauts and then bring them down. There's no emergency ship coming up for the evacuation. The evacuation ship is already docked. The Crew Dragon, that is, that evacuates Crew 11 should an emergency come up or it simply takes them off the station as planned when crew 12 comes up to the iss that one crew dragon is all iss has at its disposal so if they sent the crew member with the medical emergency down first they would have no evacuation ship for the remaining three crew members to make matters even worse this would snowball because crew 12 would come up on their own crew dragon that crew dragon would be committed to bringing that crew back down to earth you see what i'm saying here the only way to bring one person down without affecting the rest of the crew is to send a special mission to pick them up and that is an insanely expensive undertaking you're looking at well over a hundred million dollars invested to do something like that so therefore if one crew member has to come back they all have to come back but this gives rise to some very important questions what happens on a future Mars mission? There are no evacuations possible under those circumstances. If, for example, there's an appendicitis, what are you going to do? How are you possibly going to save somebody's life under those circumstances when the Mars exploration ship is tens of millions of kilometers away from Earth? Well, the answer is you can't. We are absolutely going to have to have far more robust medical capability on a Mars exploration ship in the future. Although we do a very good job of filtering out any potential medical issues that might arise. We keep astronauts in quarantine. We keep them away from any infectious diseases. We make sure that they receive very detailed physicals to make sure that they don't have pre-existing conditions that could cause a problem. That isn't 100% foolproof, as we have now seen with Crew 11. That being the case, then, the choice will be, do we let the crewmen simply die? Or do we equip a Mars ship with a far more robust medical suite, including surgical capabilities? Keep in mind, surgery in microgravity is a very tricky thing indeed, including things like blood loss and other complications. Very difficult to do those sorts of things in microgravity, meaning that an artificial gravity ring of some kind on a Mars exploration ship is probably a good idea. A rotating ring that creates artificial gravity by centrifugal force. If you don't have that, then surgery may be a very difficult prospect for future Mars explorers. So in many ways, this situation with Crew 11 may be serving as a cautionary tale for future Mars expeditions and something we want to make sure gets completely resolved before we risk astronauts on this long journey to the Red Planet, and perhaps something that can be rectified on the Lunar Gateway in future Artemis missions, because that space station, located hundreds of thousands of kilometers away from Earth, will bear a lot more resemblance to a real Mars mission than what we've been carrying out on the ISS. If NASA can figure out how to manage medical emergencies on the Lunar Gateway, that will really help 
for future emergencies on interplanetary missions. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I will keep you up to date on any new developments with this situation. I am still struggling to recover from this nasty illness. Even the act of talking is a painful process right now. Hopefully I'll be able to shake this sometime soon and I'll try to keep content coming during this time. If you'd like to support this channel, all the details are in the description. Keep in mind, I'm hoping to go and cover Artemis 2 in February. If you'd like to support that, once again, all the details are there. Thanks again, and until next time, stay angry about space.